Welcome back to Snackcast, folks. Welcome back, man. So um, we are kind of closing out the gateway drugs, right? The, the drugs that may be symbolic of something else you need to look at. and Basically drugs that mask know, symptoms. Mask symptoms that maybe you're supposed Contact to your take doctor. for very short term, but yeah, been taking forever. And yeah, we're not doctors, so talk to yours. But um, one of them that we, I think, originally had on the list was statins, right? And if you, if you um, buy into trust the official narrative of HDL and LDL and what do they total up to be, um, then in that scenario, statin probably is a gateway drug. Um, instead, of, instead of fixing abnormal cholesterol, abnormal, um, through diet, exercise, what have you, we tend to take a pill. Um, so, and, and I guess the problem that I have with that is that we take a pill based on faulty research. Well, I, but hang with me, though. If you believe that that's true, then it is a gateway drug. Right. And we could speak to that. Eat better, whatever, you know. Um, but to your point, the faulty research, go ahead. Well, I mean... A lot of the research points to the fact that what you eat doesn't even get into your serum cholesterol. Bingo. Dietary cholesterol does not affect your cholesterol ratings. Correct. So, again, it goes back to now. I, I say that with the fats, saturated fats, blah, 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 blah. But I think that there are some other factors that affect what your blood vessels and arteries have happened. I think a big a big it's a big guesstimate on my part, but things like sugar have a bad effect. Alcohol has a bad effect on, you know, the constriction of the blood vessels and that type of thing. So again, uh, I'm, I'm very loosey goosey, but the, the, ter the, the tests that are out there are, are, I mean, this is ongoing and there's new data coming out every day. It's not even new data. It's, Old data in some regard. In some regards, yes. All of this cholesterol thing started in 1953. Ansel Keys study. Ansel Keys and the seven countries study. Right. Right. It wasn't, I don't remember the year, but it wasn't shortly after that that another like well renowned scientist came to a different conclusion. Was that the Japanese, the Japanese guy? I don't think he was Japanese. And so, full disclosure. Okay. Um, Kevin and I are both in different books right now that we are preparing to make for future snack casts. So we'll have the exact data, the names, et cetera, going forward. But right now it's kind of like all in our helmets. And um, so anyways, the study came out and said the whole HDL to LDL total cholesterol thing has nothing to do with cardiac risk, heart disease, nothing. Right. And like, I think it was in like the 60s. And what happened to that peer-reviewed study got swept under the rug. Well, the, even the beginning of the Ansel Keys study, why they wanted to do this to begin with was the boys were coming home from the war and they were having coronary events, right? Yeah. And a big spike in coronary events from men coming from overseas. And... They tried to look into them, and like the only thing they could keep pointing back to was fats, meats that these guys were eating. They didn't have access to the meats when they were overseas, and they weren't having cardiac events. But as soon as they came home, started eating meat again, and that they did deductive reasoning, and then kind of conjured the research to back that. Gave that Ansel up. Keys a bunch of right. Money. You know what else yeah. they didn't have? Right? They didn't have sugar. The, right. There's no sugar. There weren't. Oh, there was. There was a lot of sugar in the MREs and things that they no were Twinkies eating. No Twinkies and snack wells? Yeah, no. And they didn't eat those when they were overseas and the MREs that they were eating. Right. So they, their diet was pure crap prior to coming home. And then they come home and have cardiac events, right? So let's blame it on the meats and stuff. So then they did the study and they conjured the study up to prove a point that was incorrect. Yeah. Well, it, it's it, it, again, I, I would tie it back personally. I would tie it back to big pharma, that it was a beautiful narrative for big pharma to tie into, to get everybody on a daily pill 
um, that being a statin. And to break that narrative um, has been very difficult. And most doctors to this day buy into the LDL, HDL, total cholesterol. Your, your LDL uh, angle. is over you 200, know. which puts you on a statin. Yeah, yeah. And it turns out that I will have more data on this, but what it's pointing to is the triglyceride to HDL ratio is the real marker you should be looking at, right? And, you know, triglycerides of 150 and HDL of 50 is a three to one ratio. You know, that puts you at a three. That's a healthy range. So anyways, these things are illegal, right? Statins are in some countries, in a lot of countries, especially European and country, European countries, they are not allowed. Right. But we hand them out in the US of A as candy. Candy. Yeah, well, real quick, recap on you were doing a fast, you went for blood work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was I was really starting to get in good shape and I uh, did a I was on the heels of a 72 hour fast and I think I was at like 78 hours, I'll be honest with you. And, you know, you go in, did you fast? Yeah, I've been fasting <laughs> a little bit, right? And I come back and she says, your, your cholesterol is high. I want to put you on a statin. And immediate, immediate, immediately, that was what was, here you go. Here's the protocol. They didn't even ask. Right. What's your nutrition like? What can we do? What can we do in order to not put you on this stuff? I mean, at the time I was what? 46 years old, 45 years old. And we know now that when you're, you fast, especially a prolonged fast, your cholesterol levels spike. Right. It's not that they've been there for years. They literally spike. And, and literally, they before the blood work, guess what they've asked you to do? Fast. <laughs> do you think... So that's... Yeah, I, I don't want to throw another conspiracy theory out there. I'm that's not, usually like about a seven, eight hour fast, right? Like yeah. Like don't eat after midnight. Yeah, it's, I think it's an eight hour fast. But again, you know, why? Did you ever cheat on your fast? I did. No. And I'd show up and they'd go, did you fast? And I'd go, oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, back, back then I believed him. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So anyway, I guess my point was just that, like that they, nobody sat me down. Nobody talked about nutrition. Nobody asked me what I was doing. And again, I'm not blaming this all on the doctors. I'm blaming this on the system. They probably didn't have the time. They probably didn't have the knowledge and they probably didn't care. How do I get this person in and out super fast? But again, with an approved it, therapeutic, right? So take your time and focus on outcomes rather than on getting me through the system. So quick recap. If you believe in the LDL, HDL, total cholesterol thing, um, then follow your doctor's guidance. No, well, follow your doctor's guidance either way. <laughs> or do but, your homework. But, um, you, you know, again, there's another narrative that's gaining steam that that whole thing is broken. It's really the HDL triglyceride. And some are seeing, even saying that high cholesterol has no connection at all. High cholesterol has no connection at all to heart disease when that ratio is kept um, good. So um, there's, again, a, there's a couple. I know you're going to name the book later on, and we're going to do the snack cast on the book. But there's a couple uh, podcasts people ought to pay attention to. Uh, Huberman Labs uh, is is a big one. You can see him on Instagram and get to his podcast that way. Uh, another one uh, is Peter Peter Adia uh, MD. Uh, he's another one that's 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 throwing out groundbreaking information. And another one, one of our good friends, uh, Dom Diagostino, uh, talks yeah. about ketogenic diets, the effect of ketogenic diets on cholesterol. There's a ton of of, of breaking research that he throws out as well. Dude, and he is a beast. He's a beast. Someone tell me that... He looks like Superman. Yeah. Well, I think... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's, you got a man crush, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go out, Dr. Don? <laughs> no. No. Um, so, so, yeah, guys, it's kind of how we wanted it. We wanted to address statins, but we really weren't sure, you know, what message. Um, but this seems a little disconnected. That's why. Um uh, it, you know, I think Kevin and I are both in the camp of this narrative of handing out statins left and right is broken. 
Right. Well, I mean, I guess this follows the narrative, right? Let's give you something to artificially lower something that you can <laughs> control. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you believe in that narrative that dietary cholesterol drives up your numbers, blah, blah, blah. Well, ultimately, is it, to your point, does HDL and LDL have an effect on cardiac events? And the answer is no. And if that's the answer that's true, then why are you basing a pharmaceutical prescription on markers that influence those outcomes? Yeah. There's a whole lot more to this story. Again, it, it's, we're going to break it out over multiple snack casts. Um, this is breaking research now. But, I mean, the stuff that's coming out and has come out in the last two years is just mind-blowing. Yeah. It, We've been doing it all wrong. may lead to massive lawsuits, and I use the word massive. Yeah, you know I don't like that word. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Questions, comments, concerns, email us at snackcast at yes.fit. Stay moving. See See ya.